Welcome. It's a pretty foggy day at the airport, and I thought this would be a good day to demonstrate a new device that we have on our glass air experimental airplane, and it's called the Slip Start Magneto Booster. Now you say to yourself, what is a Slip Start Magneto Booster? First of all, what is a magneto? Well, a magneto is the device on an airplane that uses no electrical power whatsoever and generates the sparks at the spark plugs for firing the cylinders and keeping the engine running. It has the advantage of not using any electrical power, unlike those in a modern automobile that uses some sort of capacitive discharge electronic ignition, but it has a few disadvantages. And one of the big disadvantages is that you don't get a very hot spark when you try and start your airplane. Now, various mechanical means have been employed to try and work around that problem, uh, one of which is the impulse coupling, which is essentially a mechanical spring that gets wound up every time you uh, crank that magneto around, and it spins around the magnet, and it fires a much hotter spark because the magnet's rotating more quickly. The problem with the magneto, of course, is that when you're starting the engine, just when you need that hot spark, you're not getting it because the engine is cranking very slowly. The, the power in that spark is going to be determined by the speed of your engine, essentially, because you're generating a magnetic field that depends on how quickly the magnet in the magneto is rotating. And when you're starting the engine, just when you need that spark, you're not getting it. Well, Unison Industries, which I am not uh, employed, uh, I don't work there, I have no interest in it other than they have a great device that I want to demonstrate, came out with something called the Slick Start Magneto Booster. And it's usable on either Slick Magnetos or some Bendix Magnetos. It doesn't work on all Magnetos. You have to uh, check the applicability list and make sure that it's going to work on uh, your particular airplane. But it, it works on the O360 engine that's in my glass air, works on a lot of different engines, and uh, check and make sure that it works on yours. Also, if you have a type certificated engine, uh, uh, in other words, uh, a type certified airplane, you can't necessarily install this yourself. You have to get a mechanic to do it. My airplane is experimental. I can put on just about anything I want. And uh, it's really an easy installation. It took less than an hour. And let me bring you over here and show you exactly what it looks like. I have the power off my airplane because I'm involved in uh, the annual inspection right now. And you can see right over here, this is where it sits. This is the Slick Start Magneto Booster. It has three wires that are connected to uh, pins on the bottom. Some installations would also use this fourth pin. Very, very simple. This red wire goes to some place on your airplane that gets power when you turn your starter on, like the starter solenoid relay. You only want this to operate when you hit the starter. You don't want it going all the time. This black wire is a ground over here. This is the ground wire. And this wire here goes over to your magneto. And if you can see this, it, it's a little bit hard to see, but it just piggybacks onto what's called the P-lead terminal. So this is the wire here, this, this uh, uh, black wire that's going to inject a much, much higher voltage than that magneto would normally see. And that's going to impose an even higher voltage in the secondary coil of your magneto and generate a really hot spark for starting. Also, the duration of the spark is going to be very long. It's going to be going for as long as the points in your distributor in your magneto are open. With the uh, non-boosted magneto system, just using an impulse coupling, you get one very short duration spark, not a very uh, energetic one. Uh, here you're going to get a continuous spark, which is about nine sparks per second, and it's going to go for about 60 degrees of propeller rotation. Now to demonstrate this, I'm following the manufacturer's procedure, uh, which is, first of all, you don't want the starter spinning while you're doing this, so the easiest way, see this wire here? This is the wire that went to the starter. Disconnect the wire. You know, you unplug the toaster, you can't make toast. The next thing that I did was I synchronized my propeller to the proper cylinder that I'm going to test it on. It's just like setting the timing on your magneto, essentially. I chose cylinder number 
three, this is one, this is three, just because uh, physically it's in an easier place to, uh, to demonstrate. You come up on the compression stroke of cylinder three, you can take out a spark plug down here and put your finger on there and then feel when that happens. And then you know you're at the point where that, the points in the magneto are going to fire open. Uh, when you're moving the propeller, take all the necessary precautions. Some people like to take the spark plugs out of the, uh, the airplane entirely, then you know it can't start. I just disconnect all the spark plug wires when I'm doing that. Again, disconnect all the wires, no spark, no start. Uh, the last thing that you have to do, once I get everything all set up, is I come over here and inside my airplane, just like when you're setting the timing on your magneto, very easy to forget this step, the key. You have to turn the key to the on position. In my case, I have it set to both, firing both magnetos, even though only one magneto is uh, boosted. If you don't do that, then the magneto is shorted out and you're not going to uh, get any spark because uh, the points are not going to register as open. This unit isn't going to sense it. Now, like I say, it gets power automatically. There's no on-off switch for the start booster. It gets power automatically whenever the uh, starter key is depressed. The starter key is turned or the start switch, however you do it on your airplane. But I'm going to simulate that by just jumping uh, 12 volt power from my battery up here with this uh, kind of ratty jumper cable. And I'm going to jumper the power directly to my starter solenoid. And when I do that, I will also have power at the slip start module. So I have a little screw down here. There we go. You might have heard that click. When that happened, that means that I am now sending power. Over here is the end of my spark plug terminal. This is what I do not want to touch. And as I clock my propeller, and I get the points to open, that is quite an energetic spark. That is much better than that wimpy little single spark that you're going to see, barely even see. You'd have to have all the lights out in this room just to see one little spark flash across that contact as the magneto points open. So, and I even smell ozone here. So I hope that that demonstrates uh, very dramatically how well this uh, slip start operates. It really, really makes starting the engine easy when you have wet spark plugs uh, because you primed it badly, uh, when you have uh, oil-filed spark plugs, carbon-filed spark plugs, especially when it's cold. When it's cold, you don't have very much battery voltage. The engine cranks very slowly. We had a lot of problems starting our airplane. But with this unit here, problems seem to be gone. This can be mounted in just about any place it fits. I have mine sort of hanging off of the the, uh, the engine mount tube, but it can go any place that, uh, that, that there's room for it. Keep the wires kind of short is what I think is a good idea. And uh, I would really suggest this. Uh, it's about $325, $330, I remember, a couple of years ago at Aircraft Spruce when we bought it. Uh, when I uh, ordered this, it took me almost a year to get it. It was on back order for a long, long time. Uh, Aircraft Spruce kept uh, revising that, that ship date. Finally, I called up uh, uh, the company, Unison Industries, and uh, I asked the uh, sales engineer, why is this thing on back order for so long? Apparently, there's a component in there that is no longer available that they designed their circuit around. They had to completely redesign their circuit around something that they could get a hold of and uh, incorporate on their production line. But I think they're up in production again, and uh, it's, it's really well worth the money.